Hey, my name is Nia, and I'm a 29-year-old woman. I like to say that I live a pretty uneventful life with just a few major events in it. Well, this incident definitely fits that description. Allow me to give you a little personal context so that you understand the impact of the events that followed. I was lucky to grow up in a close family where we shared everything. My mum taught me to care of myself and be independent. We were very close and I loved her a lot. When it was time for me to go to college, my mum helped me find a place to live. She bought a condo near my college and it became my home. She wanted me to do well and be happy. But then something sad happened. My dad passed away when I was almost done with college. It was really hard for our family. I was sad, but I also wanted to support my mum. She had to take care of my younger brother too. To help my mum, I decided to pay her rent every month for the condo. At first, she said no, but I really wanted to help her. I've been thinking about something and I want to talk to you about it. What is it, dear? Well, I've noticed how hard you work to take care of us and I want to help make things a little easier for you. I've been thinking about paying you monthly rent for the condo. Oh, sweetie, you don't need to do that. You're still studying and I want you to save your money for your own future and for things that you want to buy. That was the whole reason I bought you that condo in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I know about all that, but I really want to do this. I want you to live comfortably and not to have to work overtime. I am super happy that the thought of helping me crossed your mind, but you're my daughter and it's my role to take care of you. You shouldn't have to worry about something like paying rent when I made sure that you wouldn't have to. But mum, I want to contribute. Think about it this way. It'll be a way for me to be more careful and responsible with my money. The bonus is obviously that it will be a way for me to show you my gratitude for everything you've done for me. Well, if you really want to, sweetie, if it truly means that much to you, then I'll allow it, but promise me you'll still prioritise your own needs over it. <laughs> I promise, Mum. So I became a tenant in my own Mum's condo. It felt a bit strange, but it showed how much we loved and understood each other. I was grateful for my Mum's support and the things she taught me. Paying rent made me feel like I was doing my part for our family and giving my Mum more time for my brother and herself. After I finished college, I got a good job that paid well. That meant I could easily pay the rent to my mum and live comfortably at the same time. Things were going great for me and it got better. You see, it was at work that I met Gary. He worked in a different and unrelated department, but we became good friends. As time passed, we started liking each other more than just friends. It was amazing to feel a special connection that went beyond work. We began dating and it was a happy time for me. Eventually, after a year of dating, we decided to take our relationship to the next level and move in together. Since my place was bigger, I suggested that Gary move into my condo. It made sense because not only would he need to skip the intense search for a new place, but also we wouldn't have to pay any big deposits. Gary happily agreed and we were excited to be able to spend every minute of every day together. Living together helped us learn more about each other. We divided our chores equally and overall enjoyed each other's company more than ever. Of course we faced some issues like every couple does, but we worked through them and grew even closer. After dating for three years, we knew we were ready to get married. Our wedding was a happy day full of love and joy. We had a simple yet elegant celebration with our close family and friends. It was a day we would always remember, filled with smiles and good times. Looking back, I actually would never have guessed where our relationship would end up. Things started to change after we got married and not in a good way. Gary stopped doing his chores, he left them all to me. At first I thought he might be tired from work, so I gladly did everything myself. I didn't just do my own chores but I took care of him too. It didn't take long for me to feel completely exhausted. I worked for time and yet when I came home there was even more work waiting for me. As time passed, Gary started acting more entitled. Whenever I was too tired to clean or do the laundry, I would leave it for the next day, but instead of understanding, Gary would get mad. He would throw tantrums and demand that I do the chores right away. It felt like nothing I did was ever good enough for him. I felt so tired and sad. 
I tried to explain to Gary that I was exhausted, just like him, and needed rest too. But he didn't seem to care or understand. He acted like I was supposed to do everything for him while he did whatever he wanted. I even asked him to hire a maid to take care of his chores since he refused to do them by himself, but he told me not to because he thought it would be a waste of his money. It made me feel really upset and hurt. I couldn't understand why Gary couldn't see how hard I was working and how tired I felt. I wanted him to appreciate me and support me when I needed a break, but instead he would get even angry and make me feel guilty for needing rest. It felt like a never-ending cycle. I did my best to keep up with all the housework, but it was never enough for Gary. His constant demands and criticism made me doubt myself. Deep down, I knew it wasn't right or fair, but I didn't know what to do to change things. One day, I was super tired and couldn't do the dishes. As usual, Gary got really mad about it and threw a huge tantrum. Let me be clear, it's not like I didn't do anything after I came back from work. I cleaned our bedroom, did the laundry, and cooked dinner for us, so it's not an exaggeration when I said that I was truly exhausted. For some reason, that day, I had reached my breaking point. I snapped at Gary and yelled at him. I had never once raised my voice at him, so this time I really had his attention. I can't take it anymore! I'm exhausted, and I've had enough! I work all day, and on top of that, I'm doing your chores too! Whoa, calm down, I'm tired too, you know. Don't you dare try to dismiss my feelings. I know exactly how tired you are because I feel the same way, but instead of appreciating what I do, you throw tantrums. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't realise how much you were doing. I didn't mean to take you for granted. Sorry won't cut it this time. I need you to understand how much this has been affecting me. It's not fair for me to do everything by myself. You're absolutely right. I truly am sorry. I'll make it right, I promise. Words are not enough. I need to see a change in your actions. I need you to start taking responsibility for your share of the chores and show me that you value and respect me. Of course, baby, I'll do better starting from now. I hope you mean it. For the next two weeks, he actually started doing his chores. It felt so good to finally have some rest after months. I was thankful that he understood and tried to change. But as time passed, Gary went back to his old ways. It started with him saying he was too tired to do his chores and eventually stopped doing them at all. At first I was okay with it because he didn't complain when I couldn't do his part. But even that changed. He got frustrated and annoyed when he saw unfinished chores. It felt like we were back to square one with Gary throwing tantrums almost every other day. I was so tired of his behaviour and I knew from experience that talking to him would either not work or only solve the problem for a short period of time. I wanted him to see how much this was affecting me, both physically and emotionally. I wanted a partner who would support and appreciate me, someone who would share the responsibilities fairly. I was so overwhelmed that I decided to go to my mother's place and talk to her. I went to my mum because I needed someone to listen to me. Honey, what's wrong? I can't take it anymore. I'm so, so tired and it feels like things will never get better. Oh no, what happened? What can I do to help? No, no, it's nothing you can really help me with, it's just... Gary acts so entitled, expecting everything to revolve around him. He barely does anything around the house except eat, sleep, work and watch his shows. Oh, sweetheart, I'm so sorry you're going through this. What do you want to do about it? I don't know, Mum. I just I can't keep living like this. I'm constantly tired. I never have a moment to myself because I'm busy doing something or the other. The funniest thing is I don't even mind doing all the work. It's just that Gary doesn't even appreciate what I do. He just keeps trying to find faults with everything. And before you ask, yes, I did talk to him about it. It did nothing. I have an idea. What if you stop doing any chores around the house? What? But won't the house become a mess? That's the point, sweetheart. Sometimes we need to create a little chaos to bring about change. Huh? What I mean is that by letting the chores pile up, they will finally make Gary see just how much you've been doing all this time. Maybe it will make him realise the need for change. I had my doubts, but I understood what my mum was saying. I knew I had to do something to make Gary realise how much I was carrying on my shoulders. So I made up my mind to follow my mum's plan. It wasn't easy, though. 
I had always been the one taking care of the house and keeping it clean, but now I had to let go and resist the urge to do it all. It was hard because I was worried about the mess that would build up, but I knew this was an important step to make Gary understand how his actions were affecting me. As the weeks went by, I stopped cleaning the house and focused only on taking care of my own things. I still washed my dishes, did my laundry, and kept my space tidy. When Gary got upset about the chores, he would obviously throw a tantrum, but instead of getting upset and engaging in his tantrum, I just let him yell and make a fuss. Once he was done, I would calmly tell him that I would finish the chores the next day. He would threaten me by telling me it better be done or I would have hell to pay. Funnily enough, he never actually noticed that I hadn't done them. Thanks to my new strategy, we had fewer fights and felt more at peace. Over time, the house became messier. But Gary didn't seem to notice. Strangely enough, I started feeling more relaxed and calm. It was the first time in a while that I didn't have the constant burden of housework weighing me down. The mess bothered me less than the exhaustion and frustration did. But eventually, the house became so dirty that even Gary couldn't ignore it anymore. One day, when I came home, I saw Gary sitting on the couch looking very angry. He confronted me and asked me why I had left our place so filthy. Why is our place so filthy? Look at all this mess! What do you mean? I don't understand. It's not just my responsibility to keep the house clean. Don't play dumb! You know exactly what I mean. Everything is a mess. You're like a filthy pig. It's disgusting. You're calling me a pig? What about you? I mean, just look at my spaces and things. They're clean. Yours are not. How can you call me a filthy pig when you're the one who's not doing the cleaning? You only care about yourself. You don't care about me or this house. It's your duty as a woman to keep it clean. What? Have you lost your mind? What kind of mentality is that? Just because I am a woman, it doesn't mean it's my responsibility to clean up after your mess. I've had enough. You have two weeks to leave with your things. I can afford the rent on my own. Get out of my sight. I was shocked by his audacity, and in my hurt and confusion, I couldn't think straight. I quietly left the house and went to stay with my mother for comfort. I never imagined our relationship would come to this point. The hurtful words and unfairness left me feeling upset. Deep down, I knew I deserved better treatment than being called names. I needed time to heal and figure out what was best for me. My mum saw how upset I was and brought me inside the house. She was concerned about what had happened. I told her everything that had gone wrong between Gary and me. She looked shocked and angry when she heard about Gary's behaviour. I can't believe the audacity of that man! How dare he treat you this way! He has no respect for you or all that you've done for him! I know, mum. I'm just horrified by the way he thought about me. I mean, I know I should have seen this coming, but I always thought that this was only going to be a phase that would pass and then we'd be back to being our usual selves, but now... And to kick you out of your own flat? How dare he? Well, technically, it's not mine. It's yours. All right. You know what? Since he thinks he can kick you out... Why don't you serve him his eviction notice? I'll have it ready by tomorrow morning for you. I don't know. I don't want to fight fire with fire, you know? Doing the same thing to him feels like I'm stooping down to his level. Is this how I raised you? To let people walk all over you? You're not stooping down to his level. You're simply standing up for yourself. Tell me honestly, when you last had a true time of relaxation, even in those two weeks that you could relax... Were you really relaxing? You were only not doing his work, my darling. You've gotten so used to doing this that you don't even know what not working feels like. Her words made me think. I realised how much I had been overworked and taken advantage of by Gary. I had given up on my own happiness and done everything for him. I hardly had any time to relax. I mean, I could literally count on my fingers the number of weeks when I had time to relax. It wasn't fair and I couldn't keep living like that. That night, I let my mum comfort me because I knew I had to make a big decision the next day. The next day, I found a good lawyer and filed for divorce. It was sad to realise that our once great relationship had come to this point, but I knew it was the right thing for me. Then I went back to my flat and waited for Gary to come home. I felt nervous about how he would react to the news. It was tough, but I knew that standing up for myself was important for my happiness and well-being. Gary was surprised to see me standing there. 
He smirked at me and rudely asked me if I was there to pack my things. I didn't say a word and calmly handed him the eviction notice that my mother had signed and given me. And the divorce papers. What are you doing? I'm tired. Tired of your entitled behaviour. Tired of constantly feeling exhausted. Most of all, I'm tired of being with someone who treats me so poorly. You have hurt me in more ways than one and I am done. How did you even get an eviction notice? My mother owns this condo. So all this time I've been paying rent to your mother? I thought you guys were close. Why did she make you pay rent? Is that really what you're choosing to focus on? Does it really matter? So you're kicking me out? Is that what you want? I'm giving you a month to leave the flat. I'll come back then to make sure you've taken your things. You can take whatever you've paid for. This is ridiculous. I can't believe you're doing this. You made me come to this point. I wish you nothing but the best of luck. Goodbye. It was a fair ending to our story, where I took back my power and showed my worth. Leaving the flat, I felt a mix of emotions. I was sad that our relationship had ended, but also relieved and strong. I knew I had made the right choice for me. With the support of my loved ones, I healed and found a new purpose in life. I learned important lessons about valuing myself and setting boundaries. I surrounded myself with people who cared about me. Life moved on and even though there were scars, I became stronger and wiser. I didn't hear much about Gary after that day. We went our separate ways and I focused on my own happiness. I was determined to create a future full of joy, self-love and being true to myself.